let's make some Scandi inspired DIY decor with things I find around the house. Hey everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. We're in that awkward season between Christmas and spring where we want to decorate our homes, make them feel cozy, but not have anything specifically Christmas or spring yet. Today I'm decorating my living room with Scandi inspired elements and I made a few DIY projects that I absolutely love and can't wait to share with you. I made these DIYs with things that I found out in nature, an upcycled DIY, and just scrap things that I had in my studio. They're all Scandinavian inspired. Scandi decor you uses lots of natural elements like branches, like fur, and other natural cozy items. I love using this style in winter time. I think these would be great not only in January, but also throughout the winter months and in the fall as well. So let's get started. Let's begin by taking a little tour through our backyard and our side yard. I am looking for a perfectly shaped branch because I want to make some wall art. Now you can use pretty much any branch that you want for this DIY. I wanted something with a lot of interesting curves and texture. So when I found this one up here that was a dead branch hanging off of this tree, I am grabbing my saw and cutting it off. The size and the shape of the branch you're going to use for this DIY is really dependent on where you're going to put it in your home. So just make sure you know the dimensions of the wall you want to place this on and then go ahead and hunt for a branch that suits the space. Now that you have the branch all ready to go, you're going to trim off any of the pieces that aren't going to work. You want your branch to be able to lay as flat as you can against the wall. The more pieces that stick out horizontally is going to make it a really difficult piece to work around. So any branches that are kind of sticking forward or backward, trim those off with a little handsaw. I will leave a link in the description box below to the handsaw that I use. Next, grab some LED fairy lights. These ones are wire ones, they're copper. I bought a couple of these strands from Amazon about three or four years ago, and I've used them for so many different DIYs over and over again. The cool thing about these ones is that they are remote controlled. So at the end of this DIY, we're gonna kinda hide that battery box. So if you're doing the same thing, having a remote control switch for these is gonna be really, really handy. I'll leave a link to these ones here in the description box below. Now just start wrapping your wire around your branch. All right, now we're having a tangling issue, so please stand by. Now that I've untangled my terrible mess of wire lights, I'm continuing wrapping them around the branches. The way that you wrap your lights around your branch is going to be totally dependent on your style and the shape of your branch, but I'm just trying to make sure that I have enough lights around each part of my branch feature. I like to do this while the lights are on just to kind of see where all of the lights are actually sitting. And I do love the copper wire color of these lights too. If you prefer something silver or gold, that would look really beautiful for this simple DIY as well. I've seen similar DIYs to this during the Christmas season where people have taken cedar branches or pine branches and wrapped lights around them and hung them up on the wall. This is kind of the more non-seasonal version of this DIY. I love the use of the bare branch. To me, it looks very scandy and it also just looks so nice and structural. Once you've wrapped all of the lights around the branch, take the battery box and kind of wrap it around the bottom of the branch. Now grab some nice thick twine. I got this at Dollarama, I believe, a few years ago. Tie it to the branch and wrap it around that battery box. This is gonna help conceal the battery box and still give the branch a nice natural look. Once you're finished wrapping the twine all the way around the battery box, just tie it at the very end and make it nice and secure. This is pretty much the easiest DIY decor idea ever, but I think it turned out so beautifully. You can hang it on your wall with a couple of hooks. You can use command hooks or you can use these ones here. I got these at Dollarama a few years ago as well. Hang it up on your wall. I love it hanging above a sideboard so it's kind of up and out of the way. And enjoy this sparkly little feature during the cold and dark months of the year.
Do you remember these stools that were left at the little lake house we bought? We bought it as an investment property and we're trying to fix it up and rent it out and these stools came with the property. They're your typical early 90s stools with kind of that yellow wood color and an upholstered top. I'm gonna reserve three of them to DIY and upcycle for the lake house, but there was still one extra and I'm going to change it into a really cute little footstool. You can find stools like this at thrift stores often, you can find them on Facebook Marketplace often, and they're usually really inexpensive to find secondhand. So take your stool and mark about 14 inches from the top. We're gonna to make it into about a normal seat height stool. You can take a handsaw or a power saw, whatever you prefer, and cut at the markings. I'm gonna keep this bottom piece because I feel like this could be a really cool footstool as well. Maybe later we'll do some sort of macrame or woven treatment to this one. Now you can remove your tape off of your stool after you've cut the bottom portions and you can sand those legs so that the edges are nice and smooth and the base is smooth as well. I'm using a power sander for this. I love this sander, it's battery operated and I'll leave a link to this one in that description box below. If your stool is a little bit wobbly and you didn't measure the bottom of the legs properly, you can sand them down usually to make them work. Or you can use these sort of foot pads, these are the plastic ones I found at the Home Depot, and add them to any of the legs that you need to. You could also add felt pads to the bottom of the stool as well. Next, go ahead and remove all of the original upholstery from the top of the stool. You can use staple remover tools or you can use your hands like I'm doing here, or you can use some pliers. Dependent on the condition that the foam is inside the stool, you can keep it or purchase new foam. This one looked perfectly fine to me, so I'm keeping this top foam part. Then if you want, you can remove the staples left over in the stool or leave them totally up to you. Now we're gonna sand the stool down with a sander just lightly, just so there's a little bit of texture there for the paint that we're going to be putting on it. We're gonna be making a whitewash solution. So I have about a quarter cup of water in this container and I'm adding about a quarter cup of regular latex paint. I like to make a pure white colored whitewash. So this is just leftover paint that I have from our home. It's Whisper White by Bear. Combine the water and the paint together and then just put it on a brush and start brushing it over top of your stool just like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. The whole point of this paint treatment is it's going to look vintage and distressed. Now take a rag or a paper towel and wipe off most of that paint. Again, we're not looking for perfection here. We want that really nice vintage vibe. You just wanna make sure you get rid of all the drips and the big blobs of paint. I'm loving how this is looking. It's turning this yellow wood into more of a beachy color. I think I might even use the same whitewash treatment on the other stools for when we do the kitchen renovation in the lake house. If you make any mistakes, for example, if you wipe off the paint a little bit too late and it's drying weirdly, you can grab some more paint, place it over top and then wipe it again. Once that's dry, grab a piece of faux fur. Now I was lucky because I had this scrap piece of faux fur in my fabric collection, so I didn't have to purchase it, which was really nice. Place your stool upside down on top of the fabric and just make sure there's enough fabric around the stool to cover over your foam and a little bit of the base of the stool. So in my case, I left two inches of extra fabric around this circle that I traced out. You're going to trace the stool top right onto the fabric and then add those extra inches that you need. I'm just marking two more inches around this circle with my ruler. Mm -hmm. 
Now the trick to cutting faux fur fabric is you want to try to cut just the base of the fabric, not the fur itself. That's going to give it the most realistic look after you cut it. If you cut the fur itself, it's going to kind of look like you gave the faux fur a really weird, wacky haircut. So try to slide your scissors just into the base of the fabric and cut that. Once your circle of faux fur fabric is cut, place the foam on top of that and the stool upside down on top of that. You're going to be using a staple gun. I have this one. It's an electric one. It makes the job really nice and quick. Pull one side of the fabric up and around the foam and the stool, then staple it, then pull the opposite side up and around and staple that. Now go to another side, staple it, and turn the stool around to the opposite side and staple that. I find upholstering something works really well when you work opposite sides and that's going to give your fabric a nice even tension when the DIY is all finished. Now you can continue adding staples in all of the holes that you left to make sure everything is nice and snug and tight and your finished faux fur stool is going to look really good. Now I didn't do it for this project, but you can as a finishing touch add a little felt cover or fabric cover to the base of the stool. I didn't think it was necessary for this, but it could be a nice addition if you want. Here's the finished short stool and I love how it looks in our living room. It's really cute to hold a little tray with coffee to put your feet up or for a child to sit on. This final nature inspired DIY is another really easy one and I think it looks so pretty in winter decor. I use grapevine wreath bases over and over again. You can just remove any leftover hot glue or elements and use them again. I have these small pine cones from Dollar Tree. I bought them when I did my Christmas decor last year. And then I have this collection of pine cones that we've gathered as a family over the years. To make this beautiful pine cone wreath, all you have to do is arrange pine cones all the way around a grapevine wreath base form and use some hot glue to attach them. What I do is apply hot glue to the back of the pine cone and then place it on the wreath. Make sure you hold the pine cone for a minute or so so the glue can set and the pine cone will stay in the position that you want it to be. You can alternate the direction of your pine cones to make this wreath look really nice and textured. Once you add large pine cones all the way around the wreath, you can add smaller ones like I'm doing here. I love how they add just a little bit of extra interest to this wreath. Now you could leave this rustic pine cone wreath as is, but I thought it would be nice to add a little bit more of a wintry look to this by dry brushing some white paint on. I have this sample of fusion mineral paint and I thought it was such a beautiful grayish white color. To dry brush, all you need to do is put a very small amount of paint on a paintbrush and then kind of dab that paintbrush in paper towel so there's even a smaller amount and then quickly brush the paint over the pine cones. This is going to give them that really pretty frosty wintry look which I think just elevates this wreath into something even more special. This is such an easy DIY and I love how it looks in our winter living room. It adds so much texture to the wall and I think it matches so many different decor styles. You could add a bow to this for Christmas time or even a different sort of decoration for fall and use it for many different occasions. So here's how our winter living room looks. I've added a couple of Valentine's nods in here with a DIY Valentine heart banner. I'm going to show how to make that in a couple of weeks, plus a pink pillow. But the rest of this is just really neutral and rustic looking decor. 
This faux fur blanket was a DIY from last year and I'm going to leave a link to that tutorial down in the description box below. And this pillow was a DIY as well and I also have a zippered pillow tutorial for you. Check that out in the description box below. I think all of these DIY elements make this room feel so cozy and help us transition from Christmas to spring with lots of texture and interest. My girls love these little pink accents and the DIYs plus the little bit of twinkle lights in here and the fire keeps things nice and cozy and warm feeling. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope it gave you some ideas on how you can repurpose some things you find around the house or in your backyard and use them in your cozy decor this winter. Let me know down in the comments below which of these projects you like the best. I would love to know. Also, what other sorts of decor elements do you put in your space after Christmas transitioning into spring? I'd love to talk about some ideas down in those comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas on a budget. I'm gonna leave some more videos that I hope you will love and watch next right up here.